Before we get started with this video, uh, if, I'd just like to say if you haven't watched the qualifying for this Grand Prix, I recommend you go watch it right now before you start. But if you have watched qualifying, then hello everyone, welcome to the penultimate round of the 2011 GP4 Offline Championship, the 18th round, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix at the Yas Marina Circuit in Abu Dhabi, and I am your commentator for the day, George Roke, and let's get on with the driver news and race rating. So the race rating for India was given at a 7.85 out of 10, pretty fair uh, cop, um, and the driver of the day was, no surprise, given to Armand Carr, who I believe got all of the votes. And also, it should be noted that the drivers that have good penalties is just Jane McKenzie this week. Team news is that Sauber have confirmed Robbie Inescu as their second driver. Force India have signed Kirosa De Rossa from GP2. And Tor Rosso, to the surprise of, of many in the GP4 community, have signed Sam Thompson, despite not having a great season and so far not scoring any points on the board. But I think Sauber was to be expected because Inescu had made it quite clear that he did not want to be at Tor Rosso. But anyway, so here is the title picture. So at the moment, we have four drivers in it. So we have Volker first, James Willis in second, Joseph Willis in third, and Evan Byrne fourth. Evan Byrne, who is so far, as you can see in the stats, has got most wins this season. But Volker, once again, leading the championship simply because his consistency has been much better than uh, those of the Willis brothers or Byrne. I mean, James Willis, before he won those four races in a row, wasn't really in title contention. Joseph Willow has brought himself back into it with that win that he had at the last race in India. And Evan Byrne has just not had, ever since winning in Germany, has just not had the luck. And has not actually, I believe, scored a podium since winning in Germany. So he'll have to hope. And he, well, one thing he needs today is he needs a good result. Otherwise, he has no, he will have no chance going into Brazil of the, ti of the title. So Volker at the moment, as you can see, if he wins or gets any of those positions in the points, those will be... His points totals. So anyway, we are now on the grid. So Evan Byrne took pole position in a wet drive qualifying position in Abu Dhabi, the first ever in the OC and the world's history. Joseph Willis is second, and a surprise third row of Rob uh, second row, sorry, of Robert Inescu in third, and Roman Quag for Lotus in fourth. A surprise third row as well with Riffy Farkasane for Salva and Rola Moichin at fourth for Cindy. On the fourth row of the grid, we have Waze Cooper for Ferrari and Armar Carr of Toro Rosso. And as we go further down the field in ninth place. Is George Roke, who was originally 10th, but obviously Jamie McKenzie had his drive, had his 10th place grid penalty. So 9th is George Roke, and 10th is Mikolos Gal for McLaren. 11th place is Florin Volker, uh, one of the title contenders. Not a great qualifying from him, but neither was it for both Red Bulls or for many of the top ones due to the weather conditions where it was wet first and then became dry at the end. 13th place is Michael Motto, followed by Lucas Levi, and 14th for Sauber. 15th place is Alex Sasky, followed by Sam Thompson, moving to Tour Russell next season. In 16th place for Williams at the moment. And in 17th place is Vigor Holst, 4 4 senior, followed by Felix Sontag, who unfortunately was stuck in the pits at the time when the track was drying, so he didn't make much progress in 18th. 19th place is McKenzie with his 10 place grid penalty. He would have been 9th, but due to the fact, obviously, he had a 10 place, he's dropped down to 19th. 20th place is Sean Grant, 21st place is Anna Wolf, and 22nd place is Bruno de Barros, who decided not to take part in qualifying, which he later said was a mistake considering the what happened in qualifying. But anyway, that is the grid. Hopefully, there, well, we'll see if there'll be any rain for the race. And the answer is, of course, no surprise, no rain. It will be a perfectly dry race like it always is in Abu Dhabi. Day to night, the only day to night race on the Formula 1 calendar. So this should be a fascinating race for the title. Four drivers still in it. Will that, will that remain for the final race in Brazil? So we shall wait and see. So we are about to go to the grid for the penultimate run of the season. And here we are. We are now on the grid. So it's Evan Byrne on pole position. Joseph Willows in second. Two title contenders. This is their perfect opportunity to take advantage of what happened in qualifying. As the lights now come on. We now have four lights. And we have five lights. And we'll run away for the final, for the penultimate race of the season. And who is going to get the start into turn one? Is Byrne going to get it? Or is Joseph Willis going to take the lead? And it looks like Evan Byrne has got it. Or has he? Uh, Joseph Willis is alongside him coming into turn one. Inescu's in third. Quag is dropping behind Rifki Farkasane. But Willis, I think, has got it. And yes, he has. He's taken the lead. Coming round into turn three. As they come towards the chicane for the first time. Will Byrne try and make a move back? He's right behind him. Willis defends. But Evan Byrne losing the lead at the start, not what he wanted. But Robert Nescu is in third. Ricky Farkasane has got past Roman Quag for fourth place already. As you look through, Quag's in fifth, Cooper's seventh, uh, Cooper in sixth. And oh, there's debris in there. Uh, Roke has lost his wing, and Volker's lost his front wing. And Gal's been involved as well. There's been a big incident in the mid pack involving the title contenders, both, I believe, the Red Bulls. And what has happened here coming into the chicane is Ron Ball and Miklos Gal, who dropped down to 11th. 
as they come into the chicane and he's just gone into the back there of the Red Bull and Lotus actually got involved in there but unfortunately even Mikolas Gal, the Galdonado hashtag is unfortunately going to have to come back because I really don't know what he was thinking here just plowed into the back of Volker there and those two obviously are going to be teammates next season so that's not exactly a good first impression but Armar Carr was here and he went in fact went into George Roke so Roke unfortunately getting involved and so and Carr unfortunately getting involved as well so for Volker and Willers uh, that is not good well, for Willers, actually, sorry, I, I thought Red Bull was involved, but it was actually the Toro Rosso. So Willers has managed to get away without any damage, and uh, Southgate, uh, I think, went over a bit of debris there. But uh, So it's good for James Willows, but unfortunately for Volker, that's not what he needed. And for Kara Roki, it's not what they needed either. Zanon Wolf dropped to the back behind Bruno de Barros. He's moved up a few positions, so they now go onto the back straight. So Gal makes his way past. So Roke's actually, I believe, still in eighth place. He's holding up this massive gaggle of cars who haven't got past. And it's, uh, it's getting very, very close between all of them. They're all moving about on the straight as the rest of the cars head through down into the uh, into the left-hander as we come into the left-hander coming at the end of the straight. has contact and a car has gone off. He's been hit by Southgate and he is out the race. Southgate has managed to get away with any damage as far as I saw, but Armour Car has been hit and he is out of the Grand Prix. Not what he wanted at all, considering he got a podium last time out in India. And unfortunately, it is back to reality for the British driver of the car, moving to Force India next season. He is out of the Grand Prix. That is not what he wanted at all. Yeah, so we can see. Uh, so we can see that he was um, defending for some reason. He just went in the path of Southgate there, and unfortunately got hit by Southgate, who went off there, coming down. He goes into the little runoff area, the escape road, you could call it, coming down the uh, the back straight. <clears throat> but I mean, uh, Carl really shouldn't have tried to do that, to be honest. Although Southgate maybe could have tried to go to the left a bit to avoid him, but I mean, regardless, Carl is out of the race, and Southgate, as I said, has managed to get away without any damage, quite surprisingly. But he is out of this race, the first retirement of the Grand Prix, the podium finish the last time out, he'll be bitterly disappointed with that one, but he is out of the Grand Prix, and there was, oh, there was a Renault off, I believe that was George Roke, I think, I just saw on the side, coming past the support pits, and what has happened, Volk has obviously dropped to the back now, Bruno de Barros has somehow moved all the way up to 11th place uh, in all this, and it is George Roke who's out of the race, and uh, so something else has happened on the back straight, I thought it involved a virgin, because he was lifted up there, but it, oh, no, it wasn't. In fact, it was involving the Force India there. Repulse and oh, Roke spins like a record baby and so nearly gets hit. That was a scary, scary accident there. Somehow uh, managed to avoid contact from any other car coming down the straight. Let's uh, have a look so on board from Holst. Uh, so you could say probably Roke just didn't see Holst there and Holst didn't really have anywhere to go. I suppose you probably couldn't really blame Holst for that one. I think it was down to Roke not knowing where Holst was, but that was a scary spin there. But Bruno de Barros actually somehow managed to go all the way up to 11th. What a start the Brazilians made from the back. And so let's let's have a look on Bull Roke. I mean, uh, so he was just going along. Probably just didn't see Holst was there. And he just gets hit and spins uh, quite a few times on the straight. And nearly hits, I believe that was Felix Sontag, I think, uh, coming down the straight. And there was a bit more debris flying. I don't know if that was from someone else. I'm not sure. But there was debris flying from somewhere. But I don't know that might have been from Roke's car and probably from Holst's car as well. But and anyway, let's have a look again. So there goes um, Michael Mocho who goes past. And as Roke goes down, uh, you can see there's the contact. And that's a spectacular spin. Uh, I don't know if there's any more debris loss. I think it was just the debris flying up everywhere that was the uh, the problem there. Roke fortunately spins onto the support pit exit there. So he's managed to, well, he's fortunately managed to avoid any other contact from any other car. So that is quite lucky there. But for Roke, he's out the race and Carl's out the race as well. Two cars in a few in the space of a couple of corners as there's Milos Gal losing both his rear and front wing and obviously Velker at the back but at the moment Ian Escu is now in third Ricky Park is in fourth Roman Quag's dropped down to sixth as Waze Kuba's got past and now Moiton is going to be right behind I don't think it's really going to be much of a surprise for Quag it wasn't ever going to last because he's just not got the pace and oh Michael Mocho actually has lost his front wing so there I think so something did else uh, something else did happen come at the end and Mocho I mean I don't really know what he was thinking there and somehow Southgate gets away with damage again and Michael Mocho is just a really stupid move I mean it was so unnecessary and he made up a few positions from the start as well there was Lucas Levi and Bruno de Barros just trying to get past him there but that was just a really really stupid move there are question marks as to whether he will stay in a seat for next season and that certainly will not help it at all as he's holding up all these cars coming into the right hand as Sontag is being hung out to dry there on the outside is now oh and he just actually goes around the outside there actually of Mocho and Thompson gets through as well so I think he caught away with it actually there Sontag wasn't as bad as I thought it was there's Mackenzie now trying to make his way through for Renault as Mocho gets pushed out wide there he'll have to obviously go into the pits Wolf now gets through Holt obviously will have to go in the pits as well but Wolf's been stuck at the back 
but wow, what a dramatic start. That's not the start that Volker would have wanted, but it's a perfect start for Byrne and Willows, but especially for Robbie Inescu, who's currently in third place. But now here comes Wade Scuba, who's right behind Ricky Farkasane as they come down the back straight. And now is Cooper going to make a move coming into the hairpin? And no, he doesn't, as now Moichin is making a move on Quag for seventh place. As Quag, unfortunately, is going to be dropping it down the order due to the pace of that Lotus, and Moichin makes his way through. But it's still been a good start by uh, Ricky Farkasane and Robert Inescu who are currently still running in uh, fourth and third, but at uh, the moment, uh, Ricky Funk was saying that position is under threat. Cooper tries to go on the inside, and he dives down the inside into the left-hander, coming into the chicane. Has he made it stick? And yes, he has. That's a good move from Cooper, and he moves, makes his way up to fourth. Next in line is Robert Inescu in third place. And now we look at Jay McKenzie, who's right behind Sam Thompson, who's getting the Tour Russell seat for next season. And McKenzie goes down the inside of Thompson, coming into the hairpin at the end of the back straight. And he makes the move stick, does he? Yes, he does. And now Sean Grant is going to try and make a move coming into, uh, coming onto the back straight past the support pits, or the other straight, you could say. And now Grant is right behind Thompson. He's going to have the slipstream actually coming down past the finish line. Is he going to try and make a move around the outside? He's going to try and go for it, but there's not quite enough room there. He kind of closes the door, does Thompson, and then Wolf just in the background there. But Quag at the moment dropped down to eight. Southgate somehow survived that first lap with no damage whatsoever. Now up to seventh. Now here we are looking at, uh, oh and there's contact and oh there's a car gone wide there and Thompson uh, went a bit wide there as Grant was overtaking him into the first corner. So let's have a look on Wolf with Thompson, he was under uh, pressure from Grant having just been passed by McKenzie. And coming into the first corner Grant was on the inside and he tried to steer as much as he could but he just goes wide onto the AstroTurf, onto the Etihad uh, logo there. And he nearly slides actually into Grant there but he fortunately manages to control it very very well indeed. And he gets away with it, so he's still <clears throat> in the race. As now here is Jay McKenzie, who's now on the inside of Sonta, coming to turn one. The same thing's going to happen. Sonta goes wide, he spins, and he's been hit by Grant. And Grant has lost his front wing, and Sonta's in a really, really dangerous position, and he has been avoided by everyone. Sonta tries to rejoin, but he goes into the wall. He loses his front wing, and now he loses his uh, front left wheel. And unfortunately for Sonta, it's not been a fantastic weekend. But he won't matter because he'll be in Mercedes next season. But that is not what he wanted at all. He's not had a great race so far. And he was being overtaken there by McKenzie. Just the same thing, unfortunately, uh, happened. And he just went wide. He actually lost it this time. And Grant, an instant bystander in that, just had absolutely nowhere to go. And Zontong was left in a really bad position. Fortunately, all the cars behind saw him coming around the corner. And managed to avoid him. The two Williams there of Thompson and Wolf managed to avoid him. But as Sonha tried to rejoin, went into the wall. And that is him out of the Grand Prix, the third retirement from this race. Now Grant is going to have a long, 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 long trek to the pits. So let's go on board with Grant from his point of view. So McKenzie was, I mean, on the inside. I mean, he, I suppose it was just he just had absolutely nowhere to go there, Grant. He was lucky that he didn't lose any other uh, parts of the car. I mean, Sontag, he hadn't, he'd only lost his front wing. Uh, but unfortunately, just the way he rejoined wasn't very good. And unfortunately, into the war he goes. So he'll hope for better at Brazil. Now here's the battle for third. And now Waze Cooper has got past Robbie Inescu coming in at the end of the support pitch straight. So he was right behind him. He's already caught up to him and did a nice little dummy there. And there was so nearly contact there between Cooper and Inescu. But fortunately, they got away with it. And now Cooper makes his way up to third. Will he be able to catch up with Byrne and Josie Willis up front will be the interesting question. But Inescu didn't really particularly try and defend from Cooper. He knows Cooper has got the faster car. The Inescu, who will be moving to Salva next season, there had been some doubts as to whether he would get that seat, but he made it quite clear that he was tired of Toro of Torosso putting him on bad strategy so far this season, and and having supposed bad luck, which many critics in the OC have said isn't hasn't really been bad luck. But let's have a look what happened here between is this Sean Grant Macho, and yes, it was, and Grant made it past Macho, uh, pushed him ever so slightly wide, and he made the move stick up into P, I believe that is P18, so Macho down to 19, now into last place. Now here is Renan Moiton, who's now caught up to the back of Ricky Harkrasen, coming down the back straight, and now is he going to make the move coming into end of the hairpin? He's got the slip stream over 325 kilometers now, well over 200, and Moiton's going to try and make a move on the inside. Is he going to make it stick? It was nearly contact, and they've just about got away with it, and Harkrasen holding his own there on the outside, but he's not going to have a great run coming on the support pit straight, and now Alex Southgate is caught up to these two as well, so he could uh, take a pick and try and get both these two in a minute if they're not careful and they keep battling each other. As they now come down the pit straight, and will Farkman defend coming into the corner? Will Morgan try to make a move? No, he doesn't, but now he'll, they'll have Alex Southgate for company. 
As we now look at James Willis, who's running at the moment in 10th place. And there's a yellow flag somewhere. I believe that's at the chicane, I think it is. And on this Waze Kuba's off. And Waze Kuba's out of the race. And Waze Kuba, who is running in third place. And by the looks of it, I think uh, this, he might have suffered a mechanical failure, but he is retired from this race. It has been a disastrous second half of the season ever since taking the win in Canada, and his best result since then was the second at his home Grand Prix in Belgium, but it actually was a crash. So Cooper must have gone off himself, and he did exactly the same mistake that George Roke, I think, did last season. And he seems to have crashed at the same spot. But let's have a look, and yes, he does, he just goes well wide there, and just goes into the wall. That's a bad mistake from Cooper, but he's probably low on confidence, considering the fact he's not actually finished in the last five races, and I believe with this, this will be the sixth race in which he's not actually finished, although in a couple of them he has been classified, uh, having completed 75% uh, of the rate di race distance, and uh, 90% of the race distance, sorry, as Cooper comes round, and you can see he just goes understeers wide. It was just a really silly mistake. He was running in a comfortable third place. He comfortably got a gap to Ionescu in third. He was seven seconds behind, but now Ionescu has just been gifted third place back. So that is looking pretty good for him at the moment, unless any, unless all the big guns at the back from the incidents at the start can catch up. It's looking good for him at the moment, but now here as we look at Florian Volker, who's battling Adam Wolf for 11th place. As they come into the heavy nose contact, and Volkers goes around, does he? Just about, and he lets Gal go through there, but that is not what he wanted at all. Volkers need to keep calm. Oh, and there's contact, and Wolf spun, and he's been hit, and Wolf's been hit by Mojin, and uh, Volkers lost his front wing again, but Wolf is out of the race, and oh my goodness me, this title race takes another dramatic twist, and Wolf is out of the race. Volkers going to have to pit again, so it makes me, I don't know if he's even going to get any points from this race because of how things are going, but that is not what he wanted at all but Adam Wolf is out of this race and so we'll need to have a look at a replay of what happened there because that was uh, it seemed like nothing else was going to happen I mean Volker just passed well had uh, had contact with Wolf and had spun round but uh, but he'd managed to control it so let's see what happened from Wolf's point of view so he'd gone a bit so he was defending from Volker who was on the inside and there was contact as you can see there and Volker does kind of a half spin then rejoin Wolf rejoined but as he came back he went way too much on the curb and he just lost the car right in front of Gal and then Volker got stuck behind and Moichin didn't really have anywhere to go I couldn't unfortunately see what happened there he thought Volker was through but obviously he wasn't and you can see Moichin does make a bit of contact there and Moichin unfortunately doesn't get any damage but unfortunately for Volker he does because Moichin hit him into Wolf there and there was a bit of contact there but I don't think Moichin suffered any damage from that as you see, he just goes past Volker, so he clearly hasn't got any damage, but unfortunately for Volker, he's lost his front wing, not what he wanted at all, but for Mikos Gal as well, he has lost his front wing, he'll have to go into the pits as well. As now into the pits comes Alex Southgate for Mercedes. Let's see how quick this stop will be for the Brit, who's done uh, quite well so far this season. At the moment here, I believe he is in front of Sondag in the championship, although Sondag is close behind him, has been close behind him due to the fact that he got those two second places, the last one. Uh, last time out in India, he got second place. So, anyway, let's see how quick this stop will be, as Lucas Levi is also going to be in the pits for Sauber. Let's see where Southgate comes out of the sea. So, it's a 10.1 second stop. So, he filled him up with fuel in 16 laps. It looks like they're going for the three stop here, I believe. Unless they go, unless they do a long stint after the second stop, I'm not sure. But, we'll see, it looks like probably most people may try and go for the two stop today. As Lucas Levi now comes out of the pits, he does a 10.1 same as Southgate, as he now comes back on track, he's avoided, can't, he's avoided any contact or anything like that so far this race. Let's see where he comes out on track. So at the moment he's in night base, so he's dropped just outside of the points. And let's see, is he going to stay in ninth place? The answer is, I believe he is, he just I think beats, um, the, beats the car out the pits there. As now here is Alex Southgate. Who's making a move for 8th uh, for place on Sam Thompson, or for 7th place I should say. Makes a move for him on 7th and he makes that move stick pretty comfortably in the end. Levi who came out in ninth place in the end came out ahead of Morton I think it was. And let's have a look what's going on here down the straight. And it looks like to be a battle I think between a Red Bull and a Ferrari I believe. Um, is that Ferrari? No it wasn't a Ferrari, it was a Red Bull and McLaren. What was I thinking? Because Wade Cooper's obviously out of the race. But Joseph Willis could lap Volker here as the two battling up in front. Gal and Volker, and Volker makes the move stick for 50th place, not exactly the move he would have wanted, well, for 50th place anyway, he'll have hoped for, maybe to do it for, you know, first place, I think would be the best way, but Volker makes the move coming into the hairpin, seems to be a favourite overtaking spot for everyone in this race, 
as now Volker has caught up. He's already got a gap out to get out. Well, it's actually not that much, but he's now being held up by Sean Grant in the Virgin, and he's now going to make a move coming into turn one. Is it going to be the same situation with Grant as it was with Sontag? And Grant goes wide, Volker, oh, and there was, and the exact same thing has happened. And unfortunately, Gal and Grant have collided there. Coming into the first goal, the exact same situation happened with uh, with Gran and, of course, uh, Felix Sontag. And unfortunately, it has happened again. That is not what they wanted at all. But Miklas Gal is out of this race, and so is Sean Gran. That was a big crash there. The front of Grant's car is completely torn off. Let's have a look at that again. You could just see that was going to happen, didn't you? They just went wide. You can see just Grant coming back on. And just collides there with, with Gal. Gal had absolutely nowhere to go. And Grant, unfortunately, taken himself and Miklos Gal out of this race. And you can see he just comes back on. He just couldn't really see that Gal was there, obviously. And then just went into the wall. Loses both his, uh, he loses his front wing and both his front wheels. But those two are now out of the Grand Prix. Cars falling away bit by bit. And that is Gal out the race. Sean Grant out the race. We're not even halfway yet. It's been a fantastic race so far. Now here we are looking at a battle for 8th place between Lucas Levi, Roman Quag and Roland Moichin. Moichin Chanu uh, has obviously lost ground thanks to that incident that he, that he had with Miklos Gal and Adam Wolf and uh, Volker as well I should say. And now Levi makes a move on Quag, he's side by side coming into the hairpin and is he going to make the move stick? And yes he does, he makes the move stick for a point at the moment as Moichin is now right behind Quag. Quag unfortunately dropping back down the order but he hasn't really got much pace on that Lotus car, Moichin is trying to go around the outside of Gal, it seems, at this moment in time. And he's going to make the move stick, it's side by side, and no he doesn't, once again he holds off. And so he won't make the move stick here. And let's see if he can make a move coming down into the double right-hander. He probably won't be able to do that, because I mean it's not really an overtaking spot. But it's worth trying, as now Sam Thompson comes in or out of his pit box. He's done a 13 second stop, so that's quite a slow stop. 25 laps, so that is... No, no, he'll have to make another stop, but he's going quite long on this set. As now Joseph Willows comes in for his first stop of the Grand Prix. Let's see how quick this stop will be. 19 laps, so he's going for the two stop at this moment in time. So it'll be interesting to see if Evan Byrne does the two stop as well. Let's see how quick this stop will be for Ferrari. It's 11 second stop, and he comes out. Kurz deployed. And let's see where he comes out on track at the moment. He's dropped behind Bern a second. Ionescu is currently in third, but will Ionescu get past him, interestingly? And yes, and yes, he does, but Ionescu obviously will have to pit. Ricky Harkrasane has just come across the line, so will he get past Willis? He needs to get out in clear air. And will he get ahead of Harkrasane? And the answer is no, he's not. He actually drops behind him, but he'll get ahead of his brother James as he comes back out on track. And now Ricky Harkrasane comes back into the pits. Let's see how quick the stop will be for him. <coughs> Sorry. And let's see where he comes back out on track. He's had a good race so far, Hart He's obviously been battling with Moitin. Obviously, he dropped behind Robert Ionescu, which is not particularly what he wanted, to try and see if he can get his first OC podium. But Ionescu is also trying to do the same thing, try and get his first OC podium. His best result being that fourth place that he had in Monaco. As Hart comes out of the pits, let's see how quick the stop. Let's see where he comes out on track, but now in to the pits comes Robert Ionescu. Let's see if he'll go for the one stop. He's on 23, so he could try it, as now Joseph Willows sets the fastest lap at 145.9. Let's see what the Toro Rosso uh, mechanics try and do. Will they go for the two stop or the one stop? And they're going to go for the two stop, so Ionescu will have to pit once more before the end. And let's see where he will come out on track. Will he come out crucially ahead of Riffy Farkrasain? We don't know what his pace has been like on the fresher tyres. But James Willis has just gone across the line. He'll go past him. Southgate, I believe, will just go past him as well. And now where is Rifkin Hart? That would be the interesting thing. Will Ionescu get out in front? I believe he should do because he had a, he had a big enough gap before the pit stop. So unless uh, Hart has closed up a dramatic amount, he should get out in front. And I believe he has. And now here we are on board with Volker who's trying to get past Vigor Holst for P12. It's not really gone that well for the Holst considering the fact that he'll also be joining McLaren next season. And Volker goes into the left-hander, and he makes the move stick on Hulse, and he goes now down past the support pits. Good move there, but it's only for 12th place. He needs to try and get closer towards the points. And now here is a battle between James Willows and Alex Southgate for third. Willows will have to pit soon, but so will Southgate, obviously, because it looks like Southgate possibly may be on the two-stop strategy, uh, three-stop strategy, I should say. I don't know if he'll try a two-stop. We shall see. But he's on the inside of Willows coming down the back straight. And will he make the move coming into the hairpin? 
and he's on the inside and yes he does he completes the move I'll have to pit a lap or so in a lap or so but we're interested to see where he comes out and also what his pace is like on that fuel and here he is he is in on lap 26 so we are nearly at halfway of this race so let's see where Southgate comes uh, out and what fuel they put in so it's 22 more laps so he will pit once more before the end so they are trying the three stop let's see if that works out for Mercedes or not and let's see how quick the stop will be for Mercedes. 11.8 seconds top, so a bit slow there, you could probably say. But let's see where. Let's see how his pace does on this three stop. Here comes Lucas Levi, the Singaporean driver coming into the pits, the first Singaporean driver in the series. Let's see where he comes out and what the strategy he will try. So he will go also for the two stop. I don't believe Levi. As you know, Levi was on the three stop. Actually, I remember he pitted earlier, so he's on the three stop as well. But he's pitting slightly earlier than Southgate when he comes in. Let's see where Levi comes out on track. But uh, Levi now dropped down to eleventh place. As now Bruno de Barros for Virgin comes into the pits. So he made a fantastic start. He moved all the way up into the top ten actually, technically at the start. After all that Kai ensued, he missed qualifying because he just didn't really have. So as you could say, the motivation for it, I just didn't really particularly want to get involved. But unfortunately, he, he said he personally regretted that. Now he knew how the uh, how the qualifying went, which was absolutely amazing, really. I mean, it's the best qualifying I think anyone's ever seen. Let's see where he comes out. So he's done 11.2 seconds stop. It looks like he'll come out uh, probably nearly dead last. I'd be close to see if he gets out ahead of Michael Mocho as he comes out of the pits. And has he got out in front? I believe he has. Because now Evan Byrne comes in for, uh, for his pit stop. Will he try and go for the one stop or will he do a two stop? Let's have a look. And as he take, changes the tyres, and he, yes, he is going to go for the one stop. So McLaren are trying something different here. They're trying to see if they can get Evan Byrne to win. At this moment in time, Evan Byrne would still be in the championship con in championship contention, I should say, for the final race in Brazil. At a 15.4 second stop. That is quite slow, though. Let's see what his pace will be like as he is set to come out of the pits. He's dropped behind Willows, who goes now past him onto the straight there. As we look at Ionescu, who is running in third place. As we look at a replay, and oh, he actually got past uh, James Willows, actually, because James Willows has got it all the way up to third. So, as I believe he'll have one more stop left to go in this race. So, Ionescu has made his way past James Willows. That's something that he will not particularly have wanted, but something that Ionescu will hope will be in the future. Him in the Red Bull, as that is... that has been his main aim but obviously he'll be going up to Salva next year but it, it should be going up to a, I suppose a slightly better car than the Toro but he's made it clear that he, he made it clear during the year that he wasn't he didn't particularly want to stay at Toro and obviously neither has his teammate Armar Car who's moving on to Force India so they'll have two new drivers for next season now we look at Lucas Digo making a move on Digger Holst for P11 coming down the back straight and he makes the move stick into the hairpin pretty comfortably in the end Lucas Levi does and he goes ahead unless Holst can try and get an attack back on the pit support pit straight. Now, speaking of Force India, Roland Moichin now comes into the pits. And let's see where he will come out. So obviously it's all changed also at Force India. We have Armar Car in there and obviously Kirosima De Rossa, um, who, obviously, who was racing in GB2. He's had a pretty decent season. And obviously Tor Rossa, there's all changed there as well with Franco Gamba. And Sam Thompson being the drivers, Franco Gamba, who's taken the GP2 championship by storm, winning this winning the series pretty comfortably, I must say. And he won actually yesterday's race here in Abu Dhabi. But anyway, let's have a look at Moichin coming out the pits. He comes out in P9, comes out just ahead of his teammate, Vigo Holst. As now we look at James Willis coming in. This will be his final stop of the race. So let's see how many points he can get out of this Grand Prix. So it looks like he'll probably get some points, but just needs to see how many he can get. He needs to take advantage of Volker's troubles that he's had in this race. And let, let's see where he comes out on track. There'll be obviously a few drivers that will have, but we'll need to pit once more before the race ends. So let's see where he comes out on track. At the moment, he's down to P6. He's uh, behind Southgate and Volker's actually just gone over the line. Now Volker comes in, I believe, for his final stop. He should make his final stop. So let's see. He comes in, and how much fuel are they going to put in? And no, he doesn't. The team haven't fueled into the end, which just seems a bit bizarre to me. Don't really know why Red Bull haven't done that. So Volker will have to make another stop, but he's going to have to absolutely nail it on these next, uh, well, on these next 12 laps, so to speak. 
so we can try and see if we can get any points. But that's just a really bizarre decision by Red Bull. They're, they obviously try, they're trying something different. I don't quite know what they're doing. Maybe they're trying the undercut on some of the guys in front. And let's see if that works or not. He's dropped down to a length at the moment, so he might have to get through some traffic, depending on if they pit or not. But here is Volker. He's already having to get past his first bit of traffic, and he gets and he's now on the inside of Hulkst as they come down the pit straight, heading in towards the hairpin. And he makes the move stick, does he? Yes, he does. He's on the inside, and he makes it the move for 10th. And he now moves onto the support pit straight, but he'll need a lot more. He need a lot more drivers to pit before the end. Well, I'll have to pit himself, so he need a, a bit more luck, you could say, for that to happen. As now into the pits comes Joseph Willows on his final stop. Evan Byrne won't have to make another stop again. So McLaren have tried something different here. As Volk, as you can see, actually sets the fastest lap of the race there. So where is Evan Byrne, actually? I believe Byrne will go past him, I believe, but it depends what the gap is. will be interesting to see. But Willows, at the moment, as he comes into the pits, 11.9 second stop. And let's see where he comes out on the track. Burn, I believe, will come out ahead of him. But just depends how much and where is he. And yes, there he goes. He's now down to P2. So Burn has got a fair bit of a gap at the moment to Willows. So Joseph Willows will be on fresher tyres. So it'll be interesting to see. I believe Willows probably will be able to catch him before the end as he'll be on much fresher tyres. So this is going to be a fascinating end of the race here. Willows is now going to have to try and catch Evan Burn to take the win of this race. As he now comes out of the pits, in P2, Ionescu in third. They won't have any threats from him, but Ionescu's done a fantastic job in third place for Toro Russo at the moment, so he's done very, very well indeed. But there is Evan Byrne currently leading. He's just gone onto the back straight, and Willows is just going onto it as well. So I, the gap is a, is a fair bit, but I think Willows may be able to catch him before the end. But it, the question would be how big, and Volker has made contact with Mackenzie, and he spins again. That's just not what he wanted. He needs to really keep his cool if he wants to get some points from this race. And so you can just see that was going to happen. Unfortunately, Volker had the slipstream, but he tried to make a move on McKenzie. McKenzie defended, and you can say McKenzie maybe came in front of him, made a couple of moves, but Volker managed to rejoin relatively quickly. But he's lost certainly a bit of time. So it'll be interesting to see if he still does get some points out of this race, but some drivers will pit before the end, so we shall see. As now Robert Inescu comes in for his final stop of the Grand Prix. He's had a good race so far, Inescu. He's avoided trouble. And he's just been running in third, kind of on his own, really, since Kuba crashed out of the race. And he's pretty much been gifted that third place by that, because Rifki Farquharzain hasn't really threatened. He's had the pace over Farquharzain. And speaking of that, and speaking of Farquharzain, he's just come into the pits. So let's see how quick this stop will be for him. As Robert Inescu comes out of his pit box. So he'll be in third place at the moment in time. And let's see where Hargrazane comes out. Southgate at the moment is in a P5, but he'll have to pit once more before the end. So where will he come out? Will be interesting to see. So Southgate just come across the line. He'll go past him. And James Willows is the next driver in line. So will uh, James Willows get out in front of Hargrazane? Because I don't believe Willows actually has to make another stop before the end. As we look through, and yes, James Willows has got ahead of Ricky Hargrazane. So that is going to be very important in the championship. That's not what Volker needed at all. But Falk saying will have fresher tyres, so will he be able to close off on Willows? We shall see. This could be another fascinating battle before the end of the race. As now Volker does come in for his final stop of the Grand Prix. He just made it up to eight. So does, Jay, so does Jay McKenzie as well for Renault. And let's see how quick the stop will be for Volker. It'll probably be just a quick splash and dash before the end. Quickly a new set of tyres, quick splash of fuel. 18 laps of fuel goes in. The Volker makes his stop. McKenzie just goes into his box in in front of him and let's see how quickly this stop will be it's a 9.9 second stop pretty quick so Volker is now dropped down to p10 but there'll be a few cars that will, i believe will have to pit before the end then burns actually now lapped him as you can see joseph willows he's just coming down the pit straight now so he is closing on him for sure so this is, so i believe he'll catch him probably in the next probably i reckon about maybe lap 50 maybe even before that depending on if uh, Byrne gets held up by traffic. So this that could also come into play as well. Now here is Jay McKenzie, who's right behind Bruno de Barros in a battle for P9 at the moment. And there's contact, and McKenzie, is he around? De Barros has saved it, and McKenzie is around. He's going to lose a few positions here. That is not what he wanted at all, as we can see Rella Moitian on the bottom of your screen has come in for his final stop of the race. But de Barros is having a good race so far in P9, but, I, but, but he'll have to make another stop before the end, but he's doing quite well at the moment. Contact there with McKenzie. Now Lucas Lieber is going to be right behind him as well. 
Now here is Joseph Willis and you can see he has caught up to Evan Byrne pretty quickly I have to say I suppose he did have the fresher tyres but he's caught up certainly a bit more quicker than I uh, expected and now as he comes down the back straight he's going to try and make a move Byrne defends coming into the left hander but as he comes out the right hander he comes over the curve but Willis is going to have the better slipstream I believe and certainly the better tyres so he just needs to buy his time here he's got eight laps to do it so he's now going to try and do it around the outside I'm not sure if that's going to work as he goes around the outside, Byrne is there, but Byrne is going to shut the door, so Willis has to back off. So Byrne still keeps the lead, but he goes slightly wide, it kind of misses the apex there, coming into the left-hander. And now here, and here is about for fourth as well, Ricky Farquharson has closed up on James Willis for fourth place. So Willis on that set of tyres, obviously they are wearing out pretty quickly, and Farquharson is right on the back of him, and Volker, as you can see at the moment, is in seventh place, he's not going to get any higher than that. But I've just got word in my ear that if a car retires in front of Volker or Volker moves up to 6th place, that will eliminate Byrne from the championship if he does not win. But if he's second, I believe, then Byrne will stay in the championship. But it will be on, I believe, uh, count back. And now here comes Byrne and Willis right behind each other, coming into the final corner as they come onto the pit straight. And, and will Willis try and make a move coming into turn 1? And he tries to, it looked like he tried to make a move there, but he didn't. As they come through turn one and he doesn't quite make it as they come through turns two and then turn three through the fast left and now through the fast right as they now come into the chicane will willows try and make a move into the chicane i don't think i've seen any anyone make a move there and no he doesn't and as they come through the second part of the chicane but this is going to be the part where willows is surely going to make his move coming down the back straight and now here comes willows he is right behind burn and they come down the back straight. He's got the slipstream as well. He's going to go on the inside. Burn is pretty much going to be defenceless at the moment unless Willows makes a mistake. Willows is on the inside. Is he going to make it coming into the left hand, into the hairpin? And the answer is yes, he does. And Joseph Willows takes the lead of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. And that is going to be crucial for the championship. Evan Burn at the moment will still be in championship contention. But if any other driver retires, in front of Volker, he will be out of it due to these wins on countback because I believe he'll be on the same, he'll be 10 points behind Volker. But now here is the battle for fourth place between James Willows and Riffy Farquharson. Farquharson could have something to say in this title battle. Willows, who has done well in this race, considering the fact that Volker has retired, although I suppose he got held up earlier on in the race uh, by all that instance, by all those incidents that happened. And now Farquharson, who's right behind the Red Bull, will he try to make a move down the straight? This could influence the challenge of Harkerson, could possibly give Volker a helping hand. Coming into Brazil, and Harkerson's got the slipstream, surely he's going to make the move. Coming to the head, and Willis isn't making it easy for him, but Harkerson is on the inside. Surely he's made the move. Stick, and they're so close. They're so, so close, but um, Willis goes round the right-hander, but he's got a poor exit. And now Harkerson is going to have the chance to take him as they come past these support pits, but surely Harkerson is going to try it round the outside, but that's surely not going to work. And he's round the outside, but surely he's going to have to back off. He's still there. But he does back off slightly to let Willows get in front here. And Willows goes slightly wide again, coming through the chicane. As he now comes through the left hand, and now they before they come through the double right before the hotel. As you can see there on your right side of your screen, as Farquharson comes through the first right, then the second right, and now the third right. The treble right hander as he now comes, as he now starts to come through the left hander under the hotel. And he now comes through the next left hander, coming through turn 19 comes through 19 and now he's had to come through turns 20 and 21 comes through turns 20 and he's come through there they both go wide on the curve now through the final corner turn 21 will Farquharson also try and make a move coming into turn one if he's close enough behind he's got the slipstream but will he make the move coming into the final into the first corner I should say and Farquharson tries to do it round the outside he can't quite do it but will he try and get a good run out the first corner they both go quite far over the curves he's still right behind as they come through turns two and three will he try and make a move into the chicane don't think anyone's made a move there yet. Will he try it or not? He's right behind, and no, he can't quite do it. And he goes into the right-hander, and as he comes through the hairpin onto the back straight, surely Farquharson has got to try it again down the back straight. His best chance of making the move as he comes, as he's right behind Willows coming on to the back straight. It's he's got the slipstream. As you can see, the speed's going up and up and up. And he's right behind him. He's now going over to 320 kilometers an hour. He's right behind Willows. He's on the inside. Surely he's got the move done now as they head into the hairpin. And yes, it is. Rifki Farquharson has crucially got fourth place from James Willows, which means Volker, the gap, although will be decreased, it won't be as bad. Now, Volker is only two places behind James Willows, despite all the fracas that um, 
Volga has been involved in so far this race, and now here we are looking at Sam Thompson battling with Roman Quag in the Lotus um, as they come through the hairpin, as they come onto the back straight, and Thompson makes the move stick as they come down onto the support pitch. Quag drops down to 13th place as Bruno de Barros is down behind him in 14th. As now we look at Roy Inescu, who at the moment is looking good for a podium, and now here is Volker, who's actually interestingly unlapping himself here, going past uh, Evan Byrne here. This is something that Evan Byrne probably won't particularly like, but it won't matter at the moment because Volker needs another car to retire if he if he stands any chance, if he stands any chance of, well, I suppose, if he stands a chance of eliminating Byrne from the championship. But anyway, we are now onto the last lap of the Grand Prix, and here is your current race leader, Joseph Willows, as he comes through the heavy and the two-time champion. As he now comes to the heaven before the final time, comes onto the back straight. He took the lead from Byrne at the start, crucially, and he had a decent gap from him over him. And, um, but Byrne tried the one-stop strategy, and it nearly worked. But unfortunately for Byrne, his pace just wasn't quite good enough, although it probably would have been down to the tyre wear as well around this track, considering it's still quite hot even at night. But as Willows now comes through the little chicane onto the support pitch straight, this is crucial for Willows. He brought himself back into title contention, with that win in India, and now he's going to put himself right into it with this win here in Abu Dhabi, and he'll look forward to try and hopefully get another championship. Last season was pretty much a was we could say it was a disaster for McLaren, but it just didn't particularly go very well for him. He actually won, of course, here last year, so he really does like this track. He won here after jumping Southgate at the first set of stops and had, I believe, like a 30-second gap by the end of the race, but it's not been as comfortable for Willows having to la having to get past Evan Byrne who tried the one-stop, he's already 12 seconds ahead, so it proves that Byrne is obviously now struggling on his tyres, but also down to the fact probably that Florian Volker has lapped him. But as Joseph Willows comes through 19, and he now comes through turns 20, and he now comes through the penultimate corner, and now he comes through turns 21, and now as Joseph Willows comes onto the pit straight, Joseph Willows is going to win the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and put himself right in title contention for Brazil, and there comes Florian Volker, who takes 7th place, so the title for Evan Byrne will still go to Brazil, but that means he is only there on countback due to the fact he's 10 points behind Volker, so he so he needs to do the impossible next uh, next week, but Bruno Moitin comes home in 8th to take the last point, Lucas Levi set to come home in ninth. but crucially for Volker, he has scored points in this race despite the mess that he was involved in, and James Willis, unfortunately, I believe he's still in fourth, dropped behind Rifki Farkrazane, as now Lucas Levi, as we see, comes around the final corner and takes ninth place. And now behind him is uh, Michael Mocho and Viggo Holst, who comes home in 10th, and Jamie Kenji, who comes home in 11th. But here comes Robert Inescu. We nearly forgot about him. He took he took the place after Waze Kuba had crashed early on the race, and he's never looked back. And Robert Inescu comes through the final corner, and he takes his first ever podium for Toro Rosso, and takes the first ever consecutive double podium for Toro Rosso. Congratulations to them, and congratulations to Inescu for a fantastic race. And now Sam Thompson set to come home in 12th place for Williams. It's once again another pointless race. He could go this whole season pointless, but at least he knows he still has a drive for next season. But here comes Rifki Farkas saying, done a fantastic job for Sauber, overtook James Willows, and he's set to come across the line in a very impressive fourth, his best race so far in the OC. Well done to him. And now here comes James Willows, who now comes through the final corner just ahead of Bruno de Barros, who is set to come home in 13th place. Roman Quag, who actually dropped behind de Barros, even though he's quite a few seconds behind in 14th. But now Alex Southgate is going to take 6th place for Mercedes, and that is the race over. It's been a fantastic race here in Abu Dhabi, but Joseph Willis takes a crucial victory. But Volker crucially takes points, and for Evan Byrne, he is still in the title race. So here are the full race results. So Joseph Willis wins with Evan Byrne 2nd, Robbie Nescu 3rd, Riffy Barros in 4th, James Willis 5th, and Alex Southgate, the last car not to be lapped, with Foreign Volker 7th and Roland Moitin 8th completing the points. With Volker, with, uh, Volker Moitin, Levi, Holst, McKenzie, Thompson, De Barros, Quag. And, of course, Michael Mocho, who are lap down, or Mocho is two laps down, I should say, with Mikhail Scow, Sean Grant, Adam Wolf, Waze Kuba, Felix Sontag, George Roke, and Armar Carr all retiring from this race. And if we now look to the fastest lap, the fastest lap was actually set, as you can see, by Volker, so it showed the space that he had, with Joseph Willis second, Gal third, Kuba fourth, Byrne fifth, Moitin sixth, Inescu seventh, Southgate eighth, Mackenzie ninth, Holst tenth, Farquharson eleventh, twelfth is James Willis, thirteenth is Levi, fourteenth is Thompson, fifteenth is... Um, uh, Sean Grant, 16th is DeBarrow, 17th is Sontag, Michael Mocho is 18th, Wolf 19th, Quag, 20th is Carr, 21st, and Roke in 22nd place. 
And the point standing, so Volker leads by just six points from James Willows, who's one ahead of Joseph Willows. Burn, ten points behind, but only in the uh, title contention by Countback, so he needs pretty much the impossible to win the title in the final race. Mikhail Scal fifth with 62, Wayne Cooper sixth with 52, um, Southgate seventh with 51, Sontag 40, Holst 33 with rope 21. In 10th, Carr 11th, Inescu 12th, Mackenzie 13th, Moji 14th, uh, Park Rosane 15th, Wolf 16th, Levi, Renjians, Quag, Grant, Thompson, Quinn, and Mocho, and Debraus completing these standings. Red Bull also the construction cha uh, Constructors Champions, with over McLaren is second, a battle there in the Constructors, still for second in the final race in Brazil. Ferrari in third, but they'll take third uh, comfortably if they don't get second from Mercedes, who are in the round in fourth, forcing to fifth, 49, Renault sixth with 39. Toros is 7th with 37, Sauber 8th with 21st, Williams 9th with 5, Lotus 10th with 3, and Virgin 11th with just 2 points. Well, that has been the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to vote for your driver of the day and give the race a rating out of 10. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you for the final race in Brazil with a four-way title fight. See you there.